Kia ora, and welcome back to Sloan Ranger Studio, and of course, Happy New Year! Uh, this is my first time recording in the new year, the uh, Night Lords video I did we actually recorded last year sometime, and uh, the end of the year was just so busy, I just kept on running out of time. Um, but we got it out there, and we're back on the table, and what better way to start than with Gotrek! So, we've got Gotrek on the table, and he is getting some more bling, he's getting his gold added, um, we're going to be doing some non-metallic metal technique gold all over him. It's quite a bit of it actually. Being a dwarf, he's covered himself in a lot of gold, so should be fun. Um, we're going to be using Citadel colors for this. Um, you know, that's just what I have available. I've been working around, working with a recipe for Citadel colors to get my non-metallic metal gold. Um, a nice kind of vibrant gold, which I think should suit Go Trek. And we're going to have a little bit of verdigreen. You'll see later how that. Uh, ties really nicely with all the warm tones and of course if you like my content please like and subscribe uh, if you feel like supporting me even further i have patreon as well um it's just there if you want to shout me a coffee or a brush every now and then appreciate it um but anyway love you all let's get into it well here we are here is gotrek from our last video it's been a while buddy um, so yeah, we can see where we did that steel, it's still looking nice, but we've got heaps of gold still left over. And um, see this uh, sort of tabardy thing here, I actually I actually forgot to do that. My plan was to make that steel, so I'm just going to do that in my own time. <laughs> but you can see where we've got all this gold all over his beard, we've got the trim around these braces I'm going to make gold, obviously this little token in his hand, his belt around the back of his belt, the shoulder pad, the filigree on the, oh, there's so much. So, first thing we're gonna do is base coat all of those areas we want to be gold with Mournfang Brown. This is just gonna be our base color for all of our gold areas, so yeah. Got all of this area on the ax here, being careful, of course, not to get it over any of our fancy steel, to get it on the other skin so yeah there's heaps of heaps of gold areas that we've got a base coat so make your way around and um finish all finish all those base coat areas cool with that base coated we can move on to our next step which is going to be glazing in some shadows with uh rhinox so you can see i've got it here on my palette and it's very thin very thin you can see i've done a couple of tests already yeah you can see it's here we are, quite thin. So what you're going to do is just going to take a little bit on the tip of your brush and then on some areas like this. We're just going to push this Rhinox down into the shadows. All right, so on the underside of this, I'm just using the side of my brush to push it in. You know, maybe underneath here, glaze that up, add some shadows on the blade here you know following our, our highlights from the steel we can create something quite cool so if you can imagine that there's a bit of a light coming straight down so we're just leaving leaving that bit of mournfang in the middle and glazing off the shadows and then you know these kind of recess areas here. I'm just being a little bit more real liberal and treating it a bit like a wash. You know, when there's a bit of detail like this, I'm just gonna slap it in there and let the, the thinned rhinox fall where it needs to. Obviously the underside of this guy is far more in shadow. So I'm just gonna glaze rhinox over pretty much all of that. Same thing here we did on the other side of the blade. Let's just push it in ourselves a nice little highlight. I don't know if we don't see that too well. And then we've got areas like under here, so this this face on his belt is far more in shadow because of the beard hanging over it. So I'm just gonna let that do its thing. Glaze some shadows in around this face here. Just kind of accentuating some details. Same with this little guy here, just you know, this is kind of like a sphere, so if you imagine there's going to be a big pop of light right on his forehead. Right on his forehead here. Right in the, underneath the face, right underneath that moustache particularly, is going to be a bit more shadow. Maybe we'll just curve off some shadows right off to the side there. 
and then you know these little bits around here it's going to give a shadow to the underside yeah, underneath here with the the rhinox kind of fall where it needs to being thin means that it's you know very fluid it'll just kind of move around nicely underneath these little parts on the back of his belt here the underside of these you know, nice convenient cylinders cylinders are quite easy to highlight when it comes to non-metallic techniques because you know, it just kind of makes a nice straight line it's handy <laughs> and then get a, little bit, a bit more adventurous with this guy ping on the top of this triangle bit here and then ping on the bottom surface and then on the back side the back side's going to be mostly in shadow just the nature of it this little guy here just kind of pull out some details this isn't the only step that we're going to be adding a bit of shadow so don't be too don't be too fussed we're just kind of adding some depth to this brown now forms a nice foundation for gold and then of course this big guy so we're just going to be pushing this rhinox into some of these recess areas here remember pushing it you know we're just kind of letting our brush move it around sometimes the paint does what it wants but not today son I'm pushing it pushing it back but yeah just letting it fall into some of these recesses of the, the strands of this lion's mane here and we see in between these teeth just around the side of that mouth there yeah so you know from from above we're thinking the light's going to hit right about right about there so underneath here underneath there we're just going to let the rhinox shade it up so yeah this might take a couple of passes you know just sort of deepening your shadows i'm going to go back around after i've done this step and do it all again and that's all part of the fun of non-metallic is this uh this total control over your shadows and your highlights it's not like metallics where uh, you know where the light goes the metallic will react we get to di dictate where our light goes with non-metallic so yeah a couple of passes at that and uh we'll come back for the next step cool all right so there is our shadows added in there and you can see how we've started to add some depth you know to our to our brown and it's looking very bronzy at the moment so next thing to do is start introducing a bit of yellows and that's what makes it pretty gold and so what i've done is i've mixed in a little bit of Avaland. you can sort of see the tone that i've got here i've mixed in a little bit of Avaland with my mornfang i've created a bit of a 50 50 and i've thinned it down so that's Avaland sunset one of the sort of base colors uh so yeah thinned it down quite a bit not quite you know glaze level we still want a bit of uh, a bit of density in our color so you know we'll just kind of add it in again maybe 50 50 acrylic to water sort of see the transparency there so you know it's still got a bit of bit of life in it what we're going to do is say an area like this we're just going to start pushing up a little bit of this yellow you know, along the top of this we want that to we want that edge to pop you know like we're talking about with this we want a little bit of light through the middle here so I'm just pushing, pushing that paint where I want it to go. So up in there, over there. And you know, I've shown you, you know, in other in other videos, if you've seen it, how you can, you know, kind of correct things by just sort of glazing in the the previous tone. You can totally do that here. And in this case, it would be glazing in the morn fang, you know. So. You can uh, just sort of take some thin coats of the Morn Fang and just sort of glaze over any of the transitions you're not totally happy with. So yeah, just picking out some of these details with the yellow now. Just working our way. You can sort of see how it's building up a bit of a yellow tone here. And then, you know, on these these rings, just nice edge highlight. We're being quite broad here, taking up quite a bit of the the surface because as we get brighter we'll obviously want that to get 
brighter, weren't we? Um, that made no sense. What I mean is, as we get brighter in our acrylics, we'll get um, you know finer and finer, so it gets to a point where it's just a, a little dot of colour. Um, and you know we're following the same line that we've created with our steel here, right? Because that's where our light source is. So, yeah, a couple of passes at this thin down Averland all over. Um, you know, we'll talk about you know maybe somewhere around here. So we've got this forehead area here that we said would be a bit of a highlight. So I'm just plucking out a bit of colour, maybe down towards these bristles of the moustache. Just pulling that paint down. Remember, pushing and pulling depends on what the uh, what the shape is that you're highlighting. But yeah, always always where you terminate your brush stroke is where it's going to be brightest. So yeah, and then uh, you know, up on our up on our shoulder here, this is the big kind of big eye candy around the back. So we want this to be quite bright, so I'm gonna highlight quite a large portion of this, and I'm just yeah, pushing up. A little bit heavy-handed with the yellow there. I had a bit too much on my brush. That's all right. Licked it off, and uh, good as gold. Pushing that yellow up towards the top there because it's thin you know take a couple of coats take your time yeah so that's about the gist of it work your way around thin coat of this mix that we've made and uh, yeah just pushing up our highlight to create a bit more of a yellow tone to our brown cool all right so now we've got that done this is where the fun begins can start moving through the layers pretty quickly now so the next thing we got is Avaland sunset just uh what we used before but i'm just using it on its own i've got it thinned down again I'm just doing the same thing just uh less surface with each step nice thin coats and see how it builds up over the previous previous layer now it's starting to get now it's starting to get hot and you know feather it out if you need to if that's the way you like to work or you know, just glaze in our, our mid-tone that we were using in the last step. Even just glaze down to glaze down to Mornfang. You know, really, really tidy it up. Starting to get a starting to get a bit of edge edges going now. It's, uh, yeah, it's starting to come together. So with that Averland, work your way around, same process as before, just a slightly smaller surface area. You can see how it's uh how that ochre tone is coming together on some of these bigger bigger areas yeah it's looking good cool <clears throat> you can see how that yellow is starting to starting to really come through now and it's looking very gold which is what we want but <clears throat> before we take it any further what i want to do is i want to bring our shadows in just a little bit more what i'm going to be using for this is shage purple which is a contrast paint and i've thinned it down a fair dinkum amount what we're going to do is just in our uh, kind of really deepest recesses, just going kind to of glaze that in. And you can glaze it over a little bit of the yellow, but you know, be careful because this will this will tint all of the colours. But that's kind of what we want, right? We want a little bit of a tint of all of our colours to help tie some of them together. And the shosh purple is nice because it's unlike Druchi Violet, it doesn't take forever to dry. So yeah. Keeping the coats thin, you can sort of see on my nail here, it's very thin. And uh, yeah, just kind of letting it fall into recesses for you, it just kind of cleans up, which is nice. You know, any kind of areas where you might have slipped with one of the other colours at one of the other points. Just, just nice glazes, it really darkens our shadows. We've talked about it from the start of this miniature, we wanted it to be very dramatic. And this helps with that so much. Yeah. We just kind of let this, let this, treat it like a bit of a wash in places. Let it, let it do some work. You know, these little ball, all these little disc bits on the back of his belt here. It's a good place because it'll just kind of swivel around the rivet, you know. You call it a good capillary action. Certainly. In the uh, the bottom bottom half of this lion's face, and let, let some of this fall into all those recesses for us. You know, you can start to see how we've got our bright on top, dark on bottom, 
happening quite nicely. And you know, on the back side of these, let some of that fall in. And what I also want to do is I want to use it to outline a few of these little rivety areas here. Just kind of give give the form a bit of definition. Like I was doing here, I'm just kind of like panel lining or pin washing, whatever you want to call it. All the kind of gaps between panels and whatnot, and letting that do some work for me by pulling out details. Oh, if you slip, just rub it off with your finger, why not? Yeah, cool. It's feeling pretty good. Oh, just a little bit on this little face up here, this little Tamagotchi. It's like, yeah, level four. All right, that's all we wanted to do with that step. So we'll come back and uh, let that dry properly for our next little stage of highlights. All right, so we've let that dry and you can sort of see how much you know, drama we've captured in all of our gold now. It's all looking very reflective, like he's standing in some sort of battlefield. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna highlight up again with a bit of aerial yellow. It's one of the yellow layer paints, just on its own, we're not mixing it this time, but we've thinned it down, like usual. You can sort of see, that might actually not be thin enough. I'll take a little bit more, thin it just another step. Now what are we working with? Not so much on the brush, for starters. Yeah, it's alright. That'll be fine. Cool. Take a little bit on the tip of your brush. And uh, yeah, now we're working towards the very kind of uh, very very edges of our highlights now, right right towards the brightest brightest part of the gold, and this is just going to make it look gold and not bronze or anything like that. Yeah, nice yellow yellow tone makes it feel very gold. You know. When I was doing this guy, I decided that having a little bit of bounce light would be nice, you know, just a little bit coming off the bottom. So I've highlighted the bottom part of this, but just the very tips, you know, just like a little bit of light is catching the bottom. Most of the highlights still on the top, just a little bit at the bottom. That just makes it look quite interesting. Similarly, on like the inside of this bracer here, I thought it was just a little bit too boring. And I slipped. Oopsie daisers. Cool. So, yeah. Work your way around, same thing as before, only we're getting very, very close to the finish now. Cool, alright, we're getting very close to the end now, just got one more, one more highlight step, and what I've done is, <clears throat> mix a little bit of that aerial yellow with our, um, with our just pure white there. So we've just got a 50-50 mix, and thinning it down like we have with all the other steps, although we're being far less glazy now, I'm just thinning it down to make it easier to work with, so you can see quite a lemony colour. I like I like to not go up to pure white with gold. I feel like it just looks a little bit too much. So I've got this kind of <laughs> lemony colour here and now now we're up to the point where we're just doing pretty much little dots. And this is what makes it look very golden. You know when we had those little dots. Yeah. You know, kind of come around some areas here and do a very fine edge highlight with this colour. Just along to the top surfaces. You can sort of see how that starts coming together nicely there and working well with the way we highlighted the, um, the edge of the blade as well with this kind of brokenish, brokenish highlight. Yeah, just kind of some little, some little points on these, points here. You know, just accentuating all of those highlights that we did in the previous step with this last little step here, and you can see how it really starts to pop out and feel like a metal. You know, up until this point, it felt kind of like a dessert, like a lemon, a lemon or banana dessert. Um, but now that we've got this last little bright white highlight, not white like I said, but you know, we've added in white, it starts to feel very reflective, which is. Uh, just what we want for this last step so yeah work your way around and that'll be us for the highlights and then we'll come in for a last little last little verdigris glaze that'll um 
and just bring it down a notch. Cool. All right, you can see how that is um, really starting to pop now. And uh, you can see how the tighter I get, the more I miss. Anyway, <laughs> so we've got that gold all looking nice and shiny. And wow, Gotrek is coming together nicely now, isn't he? So last thing for this tutorial is going to be bringing the gold down. This is an optional step, but something I like to do. So what I've got is I've got Sotek green here and I've thinned it down heaps. So you can see how thin it is there. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, in certain certain places, not all places, I'm just going to just going to very delicately glaze in a little bit of this blue, Make it sort of around a couple of a couple of divots. Certainly in the like the kind of more recess areas, and uh, certainly in the areas that are going to get more shadow, because this is going to double as adding a little bit of patina, but it's also going to um kind of cool cool some areas down so not too heavy there just that sort of areas I don't know if you can start to sort of see how it reacts with the yellows there and uh, maybe somewhere on these faces will be a good place to show how it works yeah so just in some of these areas that get a bit less light and a little bit more water build up and just a little thin glaze, very thin. You know, use your finger to take off any excess if you slip. Don't want too much. You know, maybe just around the bottom of these, and around the joints, some of these gold areas. You know, this lion's face is just begging for a little bit, so just not too much. You don't want it to be like building up in the recess, like a, a wash. You know, so try and avoid it building up too much. Close in a little bit there and we'll sort of see how that really starts to get a little bit of character now. So, yeah, have fun with this if you feel like it. Totally optional step, but I like it. Cool, and there we have it. Here is our finished gold for the day. I think it's looking pretty cool. I think it ties in quite nicely, and you can see how the blues kind of work together to help um, that steel and gold come together. You can see it really nicely on the axe. You know, you've got the blue on that steel and the axe, and then you've got a little hint of blue in the shadows of the gold. It comes together quite nicely. Might have overdone it in a little... Uh, might have overdone it a little bit in some places, but eh, I'm happy. Um, you know, it was a totally optional step. You didn't have to do it. You can just leave it as nice, shiny gold. Uh, you know, I don't imagine Gotrek is out there polishing his gold too often, so I, f I think it works. But anyway, I hope you like it. I hope that your non-metallic metal gold is going well and your Gotrek is coming along great as well. If you like my content, please uh, like and subscribe. And uh, like I said, I've got Patreon there as well if you feel like flicking me some extra money for a coffee now and then or uh, maybe shouting me a brush, you know. All of the support counts, and uh, yeah, I love you all. So, without uh, without dragging this on anymore, let's leave it there. And uh, I think in the next video, uh, we're just gonna finish him. What do you reckon? Should we just finish Gotrek? It's about time, eh? Like we've let it go on a little bit long. My plans are this base. I kind of want to have a bit of a smoldering wood, you know, like some embers, you know, like the, the tips of the wood are still a little bit on fire, so it's going to be quite a dark base, but I think that's going to be great because that's going to make Gotrek look all the more impressive. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Thanks again. Happy painting, fam.